Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. You know we are back. It's League Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you beauties to begin what feels like a somewhat early, but roster's getting finalized real quick in the LEC, which means it's time for a little bit of preseason power rankings. 10 to 6 today, and we're going to sprinkle in a little tier list to give some love uh, to lump the teams together because... It's all about balance. You got to do some 10 to 1, and you got to lump some teams together. Just the way things go. But for the LEC in this offseason, you are correct. It has been lightning quick. It is a lot of confirmed from either straight from the team, straight from the source, confirmations, or with very reputable sources backing up these moves from these teams. So it is time to take a look. Observe the landscape that we will have for 2024 LEC, keeping in mind, of course, the three splits, everything that goes on different in Europe. I feel like we got a pretty good lineup of squads to dish out and talk about. Yeah, and a lot of the reason these are close to finalize or big rumors is shout out the Sheep Esports. You know, first time they've had this full umbrella network and the crew has been popping off this entire offseason. But you are absolutely right. Even in the number 10 spot, I don't feel bad about any of the LEC teams, and there's something you should look forward to on every one of these squads. We are starting with SK Gaming. This is Niski coming over, and Isma, the rookie jungler, is uh, the guy to watch on this roster. I feel like everyone now is expecting a rookie jungler to be at the level of Yike, which obviously is a little bit ridiculous. Which I'm going to take the risk and I'm going to have to say that we need to remind people that that cannot be the type of expectation for the level of impact you are expecting out of your rookie jungler, no matter the level of hype. We'll say this one looks pretty darn solid heading into this position, what he will have and what type of opportunity it presents to him on SK and where he will get some help is the mid lane. Mr. Niski stepping into this organization and what we have seen from him in the past is plenty of communication and synergy with that jungle jungler and oftentimes helping make that jungler that more valuable piece, that more important piece to get hit, him going and then start spreading that love around the map. If that can happen for this team, I think we're gonna start seeing the Isma takeover. Yeah, and obviously the three other members are returning in the bot lane, Exa kicked off, a relevant top side. Niski, the big wily veteran coming over to help prop up a guy like Isma, who has experience winning in the ERLs, obviously was part of this uh, Movistar Riders roster that lost in the finals to K-Corp. He's won the LVP a couple of times, so knows what it takes to win. Excited to see him uh, make his LEC debut ahead of SK. We get into Team Vitality, who is a very different looking roster than what we got after the incredibly disappointing 2023. And again, ninth might feel harsh when you have a bot lane of Karzi and Hillisang. But towards the end of 2023, especially at Worlds, stocks at an all-time low for both those boys crashing for both of them and i think you know had already crashed for a couple of other members for looking at this vitality roster there is hope here at number nine for for the vitality bees and what they can do i think at karzi and hill is saying it really is one of these situations of it can only go up i don't think that there is worse than what we have seen or a bottom you know bottoming out from these players like those performances i absolutely believe there is that territory for this thing to swing right back into that competitive form. And then you look at the top side and is that challenge? I think it's time for Photon, where it is a do or die type of situation. You better put up, you better improve, or I think you're losing your spot without question. And Photon's a tough one because you go all the way back to winter and even part of spring last year. We were talking about him as the most impactful, the best top laner in the LEC. Second half of spring into summer, he ended up being... I don't want to say a liability, but not really a focal point or having much impact on this Vitality squad. Daglas going to be the youngest player in the LEC. You remember, we already saw him play a couple of games. They threw him to the wolves in that final week of regular season action where they needed to go 3-0. and What a terrible time to have your rookie jungler make his debut. And they're taking lessons out of the TSM and Spica book, man. Ah. Rolling him on the Sejuani all those years ago. 
I, I don't like that move, but I do like him getting this opportunity to start out the year with this team, with that starting position. I think that is absolutely the right step forward for this Vitality team. I think that it was the right pivot to move away from Bo, even if I'm not ready to give up my hopes and hopium copium that Bo is going to be a, a, a different type of player that changes things in the LEC. You look at what you've got with this Vitality team. I think it is a, that retooling, rebuilding, and you're adding in Vitao, who I think is that one player that has had that rebound, re, you know, re-skyrocketing in his stocks after his performances with Excel. You're banking on that, bringing him on into this Vitality team. More so that type of, uh, of showing from him than what we saw at the beginning of the year with Vitao. Yeah, and he should be the featured guy, probably the brightest spot on this roster. Even, you know, the perk signing to Heretics, I think you and I were both kind of like, is that an upgrade? I, I mean, current form Vitao from last split, I I'm taking that as a downgrade uh, over what perks uh, will be bringing. So Vitao is going to be hopefully the standout for this Vitality squad. But Vitality or SK... They could, they could be vying for top six, top seven. That's that's just kind of how close these bottom three, four teams are. And I think that's what's really exciting is you look at all these teams, and as we've talked about, there are reasons, are little spots that you can take, that you can cherry pick on why you're excited, why you want to be a fan, why you're hoping for good things, all sorts of things like that. But I think you do need to take that reality check and realize where your expectations need to be at the very outset for some of these teams. I think there's absolutely those ones, those reasons where you can say, hey, the bar's here, but it should be up around here. We've got these type of things, but let's start it out in the nice safe zones for some of these teams. And then they can shatter our expectations and make us look like absolute fools, but that's okay. That's the point of doing these way too early preseason power rankings. Batting in the eight spot is another very difficult team for me to rank because XL, had that incredible run, got oh so close, one game away from going to the world championship. They bring in a 19-year-old rookie in Jackies to replace Abadage. Ignar comes in for limit, but the other three, obviously Peach, Patrick, and Oduwamne, the core from that squad. Eight is harsh for a team that was so close to making it to Worlds. I'm not fully confident that they can maintain that level that we saw out of them uh, from that summer split because you think of the first two splits and it was it was not good it's it's the baked alaska my man you've seen it and you're not that, it's not that impressive and then no it lights on fire for that summer split you're thinking this is it this is what a show and then it burns out and you're just left with this burnt ice cream and you're like what the heck is this going on over here kind of what you're looking at with this XL team. I think there still are a lot of question marks around this team about what type of performance, what type of, of you know, optimal level we're going to see from them. I think with the changes that are coming in, number one, I want to be someone that I think when you're looking at in that mid lane for Jackies, there is obviously going to be that difference level from what Abadage could bring and the experiences that he has, you know, brought over from his entirety of his career. You're starting out a little different there, but I still have hope with Jackies that he can bring in that young uh, talent and that we want to see for this XL team. And then you go down to the bottom lane and you're looking at Ignar in for Lemon. I think right now, as far as the playmaking, the later team fights, things like that, Ignar can be an absolute game changer for this team. Someone that is going to make that difference in how things are going and how that shot calling is going to, to the past and to now type of thing. There is that risk that I don't think he develops that synergy alongside Patrick in that 2v2. In lane is where I'm going to have those questions for the two of them. And uh, as always is with Ignar, what's the meta? If he's playing Enchanters, I, good luck, XL. If the engaged champions are still strong, well, they're going to win the title like he did with NRG. It's that black and white cut and dry uh, with him. But yeah, Jackie's... Listen, there's eight plus rookies coming in this year to the LEC. I feel like he's on the bottom of that totem pole in terms of hype for prospects coming in. I think there were even other mid laners that people have been hyping up more, which means expectations aren't going to be the highest for him, but maybe he's got a chip on his shoulder. We've seen many times the rookies that don't have the hype are the ones who really show up on this big stage. There's always one that creeps through, and there's always one that you have all the hype for that doesn't end up delivering. So it is one of those situations you're trying to fill it out in the landscape of the LEC. And usually with so many rookies coming up, you're going to have to find which one it is in that type of situation. 
looking at Jackies, I think this 19 year old does have a good opportunity in front of him with this team as well as the veterans with Onawamne in the top side is going to be a big factor for the team. I think Peach is someone that did solidify himself that starting position and what he can offer in the LEC and what hopefully we can see continue to grow from him as he becomes more comfortable in the region and more comfortable with the communication with his teammates is going to be a big factor for Excel. The question is, do they know what happened? What was the secret sauce that had to turn around late in the year for them? Because if they can start the year with that eye-opening view on the game or view of this team together, then absolutely this is a top four potential team like we saw out of in the summer split. I'm, call me a pessimist, not as positive that that's going to be the case for this squad, but always love to see Odo returning, love to see him doing draws at Worlds, love to see him on stage being one of the most exciting top laners to watch in the LEC. Number seven on here, I think people will probably have lower than we have, but I'm a sucker for potential and high ceiling. Initially, Mad Lions, when they announced this roster, I think we both were like, what are they doing? You want El Yoya to be the featured leader, shot caller, do everything with four rookies around him. But as if I've as I've watched a bit of these rookies, learned a little bit. We've got so much built-in synergy. Three out of the four of these rookies come and played together on Movistar, including the bot lane. You got four fifths of this roster are now gonna be speaking Spanish potentially. So I actually like what Bad Lions are doing, coupled with all four of these guys are some of the most hyped up rookies in their position. Uh, you know, first time swimming through, I saw that hook come down with the Mad Lions bait. Mm -mm, I ain't biting. I ain't biting on that one. I'm looking a little different at that hook right now, feeling some of these things, learning a little bit more about this roster. As you said, you're bringing in, you know, kind of three-fifths of that movie star lineup from the EU Masters. It's got to be uh, LVP where you're bringing in. This talent for this new look at, at the Mad Lions team, as well as keeping El Yoya, of course, as we have talked about before. I think there absolutely are reasons you can find this youth, uh, you know, injection for this Mad Lions team being the right play moving forward and what they can offer. I think the biggest one, the biggest piece you got to be looking at for this Mad Lions team is you're looking at that top lane, my man, because you got to be going through the champion pool of what we're going to be seeing. Yeah, Myron, these are legit professional games. This dude has played Fiddlesticks top, Vayne top, Zeri top, Varus top, a little bit of Ari top. These are not top lane champions. They're just champions that he happens to play in the top lane. So, I mean, him paired with El Yoya in some of these early games, if someone's getting close to a Malphite or an Orn, I guarantee you this dude's playing an 80 carry to counter it. And this is either going to totally flop or totally succeed type of situation I feel like we're headed towards with this top lane because these picks are so volatile, so different, so explosive that if they get ahead, you get El Yoya making sure he's paying some visits there. It can be an absolute disruptor to everything that we see in the LEC right now, the established order, the way that he plays these champions, the champions he's playing in that role very much a shakeup, very much a difference in one of these ones where if it pays out, it works out for these Mad Lions could find themselves on the pioneering path in the LEC. And what they really showcase here, Mad Lions as an organization, is El Yoya, you're the face of the franchise. We love, obviously, one of the best junglers in the LEC. You're Spanish for a Spanish organization. And the one guy who isn't Spanish, Frescoe in the mid lane, apparently endorsed specifically by El Yoya and he was the first pick that he wanted. So having that confidence from the leader, from the veteran, the face of the org has got to feel great for this entire starting five, really. And El Yoya is, is definitely a professional player that has built up enough of a track record that you should have that confidence on who he is signing off on, on who he wants to be at the very pinnacle peak. I'm willing to listen to you. I'm willing to give you that chance, give you that opportunity type of thing. And the other one that still is going to be, though, be that question mark about El Yoya specifically and more or less this Mad Lions roster is how well he can step up into that leadership position for this team. We have seen a lot of emotions throughout the time for El Yoya, a very emotional player, someone that does, unfortunately, I think, let that tilt settle in at various times that have been unfortunate times for these mad lines where things have really not turned around 
So I'm counting on him having a lot stronger mental individually, and then as well as how he's incorporating and interacting with this young roster, you know, and a mid laner that he has pretty much handpicked. That's going to be a big part of this Mad Lion's success if they do have it. And I don't, I don't want to get a little too hype, but Mad Lions and rookies got a pretty good history. You go back to this is shades of humanoid being the one veteran guy, and then these young rookies named Karzi, Kaiser, a guy named El Yoya, all of a sudden come in and win the entire split. I can't be forgetting about the the Nar main Armut up in the top side. Less come of a on, rookie man. at that point, but yeah, the, the Nar goat of the LEC for first. Yeah, very, very much, but yes, this does bring back some old memories, and we have seen it through the Mad Lions before. I think it is important to mention, of course, as as we talked at the very beginning of it, that connection with the Movistar Riders that uh, that the Mad Lions do have. So, of course, still expecting that familiar here, even with a lot of these players stepping into that unfamiliar territory of the LEC main stage. Last squad on this first part one of the LEC Power Rankings is maybe going to have the biggest fan base for a rookie organization. It is, of course, the Blue Wall. Carmine Corp, K Corp. We've got familiar faces across the board here. Obviously, the core that have been dominating EU Masters for years in Cabo Shard, the long awaited return. This guy was played on Gamut in like 2015, and he's still dominating the ERLs back to the LEC, Saken and Targamus. Saken is treated as the faker of the European Regional Leagues. Any teaser video, he's holding these three EU Masters trophies, always trying to make history. And I think some people are going to take that the wrong way. They're going to take it about, you know, almost kind of memeing on him that, oh, yeah, you're just the faker of EU Masters, whatever. Man, that's the best thing ever to be compared to a faker of anything type of situation. And I think if anything more than deserve it to get this opportunity once again at the top level in the LEC. And I think really forsaken, the best thing about this opportunity with K-Corp that you're looking at is this is going to be a roster that is going to help them, is one that should have a level of competitiveness, at, you know, at the very least in that mid-tier of the LEC. That is my expectation of this K-Corp team. You're right, stepping right back in. Welcome back, Mr. Cabochard, to the LEC. It has been uh, far too long, I think, since we've seen this player at this type of level in the European region, but still one that has been contributing, has been clapping back at folks. You better believe this Cabochard is ready and is in LEC form the way he's been playing the last couple of years for Carmine Corp. And he's had offers from LEC teams over the last couple of years. Talk loyalty. He's just been with K Corp, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever you guys get promoted, I'll play in the LEC. And here he is reaping those rewards Obviously, the biggest question mark on this roster is going to be Bo in the jungle because initially looked like the hype was there, fell off a cliff with Vitality, but new teammates, new squad, new fan base, a year under his belt of being in the LEC. I I'm not ready to call it a wash for Bo yet. I'm not ready to call it a wash for Bo yet, and I got the trick up my sleeve. And that trick up my sleeve is Carmine Corp saying, okay, how do we really make sure that we're getting the best out of Bo, that we're getting FPX, Bo? Bring in FPX stake onto the coaching staff. That's got to be the secret. Yes, bring in that comfort, bring in familiarity for someone like Bo. This is a player that I have not given up yet. I think the individual skill and talent is so high that you can't give up on this type of talent just yet until you take a couple of these swings, a couple of cracks at it, to try and find the right combination, the right players to support them, to work with them, all these type of things. And I think right now with this experiment for Carmine Corp and what type of you know positions and are available there, both stepping into this jungle position, the team needing someone that maybe can be an explosive carry player, Bo is absolutely the guy that I'm th thinking fits that bill. And obviously, Bo and Upset got along to a decent degree if they're both agreeing to play on the same team again after the debacle that was Team Vitality. So many issues behind the scenes and on the rift for that squad. But hopefully, that 80 carry jungle duo was not at the forefront of those issues. Otherwise, we're just running through the same thing again. But obviously, so hyped to see K Corp in that first LEC match with the fans losing their minds. Breaking this up into a little bit of tears, even though we haven't done the top five, you know, the S tier, A tier that everybody loves to do. We're adding an extra caveat. If you go down to C tier, I'm giving lumping a surprise 
potential. For the bottom three squads, Vitality, SK, and XL. And what we mean by surprise potential is they could climb three spots ahead. They could be a playoff push. That's the talent that's on even the bottom three in the LEC. And that's, I mean, I'm going to start with SK when we're looking at that bottom three talent. I'm talking about that potential because I think that there still is that strong potential rating for this squad. Even if you want to slap on the initial rating and you want to go wait a couple of weeks into that first, you know, that winter split, I'll buy it because I still think that potential is there for this team. I think that if Niski can help facilitate Isma in the jungle and the type of learnings and type of lessons that he will have to, you know, skip over jumping into this LEC level of talent, a relevant can be a solid option in the top side we've seen before in this LEC, as long as we're not seeing too many of these disruptor game changing top laners in the LEC. Some of these teams are taking risks on come through and pay off. And that bottom lane of Exa Kick and Doss, if they can find those secret sauce that they had for a couple of weeks in the LEC, that level of contribution, this is an SK team that is going to do damage, that is going to upset people in the LEC. That's my hopium copium take early on. Them. Tear ahead of the surprise potential, you got your dark horses. And what we mean by a squad like K-Corp and Mad Lion slotting in here is potential for an actual deep run and to upset some of these more favorite teams. And both Mad Lions and K-Corp, if things come together early on for these young players, top four potential, absolutely. And it's actually really scary how, how good both of these two teams can be in this dark horse type of category. Because if it does work out, number one, looking at that Mad Lions, that young roster, those rookies, they pan out. They are absolutely at the level up to that task, the difficulty of the main stage of the LEC. Merwin's pulling out that champion pull, and it is an absolute havoc cause, you know, wreck up in the top side. Yes, this is going to be a Mad Lions team that is going to be threatening a top three type of position in the LEC. And on the flip side, Carmine Corp, you got stability, you got Cavachard, you got Saken with another opportunity in the LEC, and you can hit that home run, that grand salami, if Bo is performing at that top tier level. Part two of the Power Rankings coming to you soon, but that is it today 